بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين In this brief presentation we are going to present the pathophysiology of thrombus formation and its prevention by drugs like thrombolytics, anticoagulants and antiplatelet aggregations. Surface group are drugs which are used to dissolve already formed thrombus which is the main topic of today are drugs which are used to dissolve already formed thrombus and to inhibit blood coagulation and to be inhibit platelet aggregation okay so this is the main the main drugs we are going to speak about today drugs which will dissolve a thrombus a drug which will inhibit platelet uh, platelet aggregation and drugs which inhibit blood coagulation so as we know thrombus formation thrombus as no we know and uh, we have studied in physiology that thrombus is due to formation of a clot in a blood vessel it might be uh, arterial thrombosis in a main artery like a coronary artery or cerebral artery and it can take place in a venous producing venous thrombosis of course we are talking about arterial thrombosis arterial thrombosis so Arterial thrombosis usually in this case will result in obstruction. Arterial thrombosis in this case will result in obstruction of blood flow to the organ, for example, to the heart, producing ischemic heart disease, as we have discussed before, or it can play, take place in cerebral blood vessel producing stroke. So how thrombus formation, how thrombus is formed? Thrombus is formed through different, two different stages, we can say. First, platelet activation and adhesion and aggregation. The second is the formation of clot. If we just imagine this is the blood vessel, normal blood vessel, with atherosclerotic plaque. As we can see, this is the lumen of the blood vessel. And the blood platelets, they are inactive and they circulate freely inside the plasma. When for any reason, a rupture takes place in the endothelium cover of the atherosclerotic plaque, this will result in release of many mediators, which will cause platelet activation, adhesion, and aggregation at the site of injury. The mechanisms by which this takes place we will discuss in a few minutes. So the first step is the platelet adhesion, activation and aggregation at the site of injury. This platelet, which, no, which is known as platelet plug, will cover the injured site and it will be supported by fibrin clot. Fibrin clot will seal, this is the second stage. So the first stage is the platelet activation, adhesion, and aggregation. And second stage is the formation of fibrin clot. Fibrin will cover spaces between platelets and it will give support to the platelet plug. Okay? How fibrin is formed? When endothelium cover of the atherosclerotic plate is exposed, this will lead to activation of different coagulation factors including factor 10a factor 10a this factor 10a which is a vitamin k dependent factor it will convert prothrombin into thrombin which is factor 2a in the blood coagulation okay so prothrombin under the effect of factor 10a which requires vitamin k for its uh, action will be converted to thrombin. As we will see later, thrombin will be involved in the aggregation. It will increase the aggregation of platelets as we will see later. A plus thrombin will convert fibrinogen, which is soluble in plasma, which is factor 1, fibrinogen, and it will convert it to insoluble fibrin. Converted into insoluble fibrin. Insoluble fibrin will form will form the clot which will cover the platelet plug okay so now the platelet plug is formed and it seals the injured part of the vessels okay 
and of course once the uh, thrombus is formed it will obstruct blood flow in that vessel so in this case how we can treat a condition like that how we can treat it by now by three different mechanisms the first by preventing by dissolving the fibrin clot the second by preventing the formation of fibrin a third by preventing platelet activation and aggregation okay so we can prevent thrombus formation through different through three different mechanisms first by dissolving already formed thrombus second by preventing formation of fibrin clot a third by preventing platelet aggregation and activation so the first is by dissolving already formed thrombus by using what's known as tissue plasminogen activator tissue plasminogen activator this tissue plasminogen activator will act on an endogenous plasminogen which is present in the plasma and convert it to plasmin a plasmin will work on the fibrin and converted into soluble fibrin dissolving the thrombus okay so this is the first group the first group they dissolve the thrombus how they do that by activation of tissue plasminogen tissue and they are known as tissue plasminogen activator okay they convert plasminogen into active plasmin this plasmin will cause dissolving of the fibrin clot and convert insoluble fibrin to soluble fibrin dissolving the fibrin clot and therefore will dissolve uh, dissolve the thrombus these are known as thrombolytics as we will see later thrombolytics i.e. they cause lysis of the thrombus a very famous example of tissue plasminogen activator is alteblase we'll take many examples like streptokinase like neurokinase etc so this is the first group tissue plasminogen activator and these are used to dissolve already formed thrombus the second groups that are used to prevent the formation of a thrombus to prevent clot formation to prevent clot formation that's why they are known as anticoagulants they are known as anticoagulants as you will see later these anticoagulants they work by different mechanism the first known as antithrombin 3 activators antithrombin 3 activators antithrombin 3 this is normally present in the plasma its function is to bind to thrombin combines to thrombin and convert it into inactive complex okay in this case it will prevent conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin okay so an antitrobin 3 activators the most famous example like the heparin what does it do it will bind with thrombin preventing the formation of the clot of course this will produce very fast effect and usually they are given by intravenous route uh, sorry subcutaneous or intravenous route the second group there are drugs which will antagonize vitamin K as we have said vitamin K is essential in the activity of many coagulation factors so drugs which antagonize vitamin K will antagonize coagulation factor most famous example is warfarin warfarin is vitamin K antagonist it prevents the reduction of vitamin K which is required for the activation of the coagulation factors therefore warfarin will prevent the activity of coagulation factor and therefore will prevent the formation of thrombin of course this effect usually is delayed because thrombin is usually present in the plasma and it takes a time before it can be depleted okay so uh, we'll discuss that in details in a few minutes so this is the second anticoagulant second group of anti 
anticoagulant. Third group of anticoagulant drugs which directly antagonizes the factor 10A, factor 10A antagonist. This includes the abixaban, abixaban, this is a new, new anticoagulant group. So in this case we have discussed that we can prevent a clot formation by using drugs which act at different steps of the clot formation and they belong to different groups and they have different uh, clinical application. Okay, so first we said we dissolve already thrombus. The second we said drugs that prevent coagulation blood. The third are drugs which prevent platelet aggregation. Third, the group of drugs we are going to discuss today, inshallah, are drugs which are prevents uh, platelet aggregation. This includes this anti-platelet aggregation drugs, they belong to different group of drugs, as you will see, of different mechanism of action, and includes the most famous aspirin, tyrofibam, clobidogrel. Okay? So, this is how thrombus is formed through platelet aggregation and clot formation. We said that this can be antagonized by different group of drugs, either that dissolve the thrombus or prevent the formation of the thrombus or prevents platelet aggregation. If you like my presentation, don't forget to press like. Please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to share with friends. Wish you all the best luck. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.